Welcome to the 24-hour marathon as uh, Money Info uh, trying to do its part to help raise a little bit of money for Google to pay the uh, $2.7 billion fine from the EU. Uh, uh, that is correct. Is that right, Mike? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, Mike, actually, Mike King could probably come up with that two. Point seven billion. Uh, that's that's kind of pocket change to you guys in Vegas. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna still take a check. <laughs> take a check. Yeah. Maybe a maybe a maybe a post dated check. Well, yeah. How about a post dated check from Shamut Bank up in Boston? Ooh. Huh? That's that's really post dated. <laughs> when do they go out of business? <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> Carol used to have an uh, an account at Mutt Bank when she was uh, working at WBZ TV. Yeah, yeah, we remember. By we, the way, Massachusetts is one of the few places that it's illegal to write a post dated check. No way. Are you kidding? Oh yeah. I didn't think it was legal nope. anywhere. Really? Right. <laughs> God. So how you guys doing? We're getting ready for oh. July 1st. You know, July uh, 1st uh, has been the best performing day yeah. in the market going back in uh, 30 years. Uh, it's gained a cumul- uh, it's gained over 1,000 points since 1998. Well, you better not have Tim Connolly on the show then. <laughs> but you know what? Everything Tim has talked about has come true, right? I mean, I, I think it's amazing. Yeah, I, I think it's amazing. Well, guys, did you see that Elon Musk wants to build a hyperloop from O'Hare to downtown? So instead of uh, 45 minutes, it would be a 125-mile-an-hour hyperloop built by Boeing. uh, And it would just take a few minutes. Uh, You know, Boeing is an amazing company. They really are. You really look at it. They really are cool. I know. Everything from, you know, puddle jumpers to a hyperloop. And the amazing thing is the amount of backlog that they carry. Yeah. You know, you look at some companies and you look at their backlog and you say, well, just, you know, this will keep us in business for X. I mean, it's just a ridiculous number for Boeing. And, And not only that. Um, a lot of the times when you look at that, I mean, that's on the basis of, you know, we just can't build enough in the next year or two years or five years to even make a dent in that. Mm-hmm. So well, a lot of product that they have, they have one of the premier products in their area. Yeah. The what? amazing thing is how many areas they're in. Yeah, yes. Well, you know, you you think about, uh, you know, uh, having a 20 year backlog or something, uh, which they do uh, on some of the uh, I don't know whether it's the 37s or whatever. I don't know the numbers on those planes. But, you know, you just think uh, it is uh, truly, uh, uh, truly amazing. By the way, guys, did you happen to see the video of that plane's engine? The, that Air Asia plane that uh, had its engine, I guess it sheared off part of the blade, and it was just shaking just fiercely um, from uh, Perth, Australia. And then they had to bring it back to Perth. Um, God. <laughs> it was, when, the, when the pilot tells you to pray, that... <laughs> That's a, that, that's a sign you could have a few problems. What do you think? And not only that... You said it twice. Y- yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, and Mike, explain this July phenomenon again. Yeah, it's um, every year as we go into July, everyone looks for a July 4th rally. Okay. July has been uh, one of the best months of the year. Um, you know, the hottest Julys were 2009 and 2010, where both the Dow Jones and the S&P 500 gained more than 6%. Mm-hmm. And uh, 2013 was a strong performance also. Uh, 
Um, of course, okay. this year we're at a very high level, so it's might maybe more difficult to get the same kind of results because we're at such high levels already mm-hmm. going into July. Yeah. Huh. Well, it's also the first day of the second half. Well, there you go. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you know, it's the same thing as uh, the January being so important, you know. The first day of January talks about, you know, shows what we're going to do in January and or the first week. And then the first week, you know, gives us an idea of the first month. And then we'll have a good January. And, you know, it, it, it just kind of feeds upon itself that way. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, but, uh, you know, I, I'm hearing a lot of people, you know, looking at things uh, relative to window dressing. You know, nobody wants, everybody wants to show that they own Tesla. Nobody wants to show that they own GE. And so you get a lot of window dressing play, you know, at the end of the first half. Hmm. <laughs> That's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it is. It's very interesting because, uh, yeah, Elon Musk is, uh, you know, I, I just think it, it truly amazes me because, uh, you know, I used to uh, go up to Vandenberg all the time and, and watch all the rocket launches up in uh, at the Vandenberg Air Force Base. Uh, but, you know, I start thinking about, um, you know, what they're doing with reusing all this stuff. And, oh, yeah. And, and they did what? One turnaround in two days <laughs> on two different they, they coasts? Did two. Yeah. They yeah. Did, they, they had two over the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. But night, I guess. It was the same they rocket, though, right? They rode of 10 satellites. Yeah. And both of those, and both of those uh, reusable rockets landed upright on the barge so that they can reuse them yet again. That's amazing. I, you know, it's like it is. You, you know, know, and they had so many failures. I, you know, just something clicked, and and since then, it's just you know, it's like what the American attitude in the '60s and '70s and '80s was all about, uh, relative to uh, NASA and uh, you know space exploration. We just kind of got used to it. I mean, it's a given that. If it will work, when in fact you know there's an awful lot that goes into that. Well, the, it's not only that, Charles, but I mean, don't you think that um, you know? I mean, oh, oh, I can't think of the name of the uh, movie uh, of the black women who uh, were like computer coders behind the figures. Be- yes, um, I mean, you start looking; those are the very early days of NASA. And they were so far behind the eight ball. I mean, it was like, yeah. you know, they're using hand hand coding uh, because they didn't have computers. So they finally get computers and they didn't have anybody at NASA that can handle it except them, which was wonderful. But, you know, you think with all the bureaucracy that NASA has, you have this little private company with Elon Musk. And, right. and they're just kicking butt. I, I love watching this thing. You know, and the feds have just got to be looking at each other going, how are they doing this? <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. It amazes me. It really does. And it, it shows you the bureaucracy. Um, we had, uh, it was interesting, we were at uh, uh, Florida Broadcasters last week. And uh, uh, Craig Fugate, who was the head of, the, uh, of FEMA, uh, and it was a former head of the emergency management for the state of Florida for Jeb Bush. So anyway, he's, he's up there and he had uh, two terms uh, up in, uh, in D.C. And he, he was laughing. He just said, you know, Trump asked him to stay on. And he just said, no way. He said, I got to get out of this town. He said, I, I don't see how any of you guys ever get anything done. And he said, I'm not like that. I'm not made like that. And, and, you know, it's true. You know, they, it just yeah, seems it's, like it's total inertia. You know, yes, it is. And you're talking about a bunch of people who are not as result-oriented as they kind of need to be. Uh, you know, activity is not really making headway. Activity is just activity. You know, um, until they get to the point where they get things done in a prescribed period of time, you know, all of 
that activity is meaningless. Although I will say, uh, you know, there there seems to be a, a bit of a change in that um, relative to uh, results. But hey, you know, the guy got elected by saying, you know, I'm going to produce results, and you know, some areas he has, and some areas he hasn't. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens and and see if anything can happen. I mean, that's that's the thing. There's so much polarization now. There, it's just totally well. You know, you look at it and you see somebody who's been in private business going there and is really a fish out of water. Oh yeah. You know you, you know, except for the things that you know you have the power to proclaim and sign off on is, you know, not nearly everything that's that's needed there. Now they're talking about this health care. You know, we got pretty excited. Uh, the health care stocks in general had very, very strong rallies from, the, from Tuesday on um, as the new rotation group. What's amazing about this market is the number of sectors that, tend to operate kind of on their own. You know, we had that very narrow rally in the big name NASDAQ stocks, all the, quote, FANG stocks, uh, you know, Facebook, Amazon, Google, uh, and Netflix. And, you know, all of a sudden those things are looking tired and have had parabolic rises, almost vertical rises. Um, and, you know, nobody, every, everybody and their brother says, you know, just these things are getting overdone. And then the money, which is very momentum oriented, moves to another group. Before it was the FANG stock, let's remember that from election day on, it was the banking stocks. And they were amazingly strong. Then it was the FANG stocks. Now it seems to be. Uh, now it seems to be the medical care group, and by that I mean not only the drug companies like Pfizer and Merck and uh, you know some of the others, but it's also the equipment companies like Intuitive Surgical, who has the robotic surgery uh, kind of group, and then of course the biotechs, you know. The, the tech on the end of it, you know, makes it just another group, but it has had a man, uh, you know, a monumental rise, and it's giving a little bit of it back now. Now we're also seeing that uh, Kroger and some of the other uh, food groups, after the, um, you know, after the Amazon Whole Foods deal, are beginning to come back. But you know, they've really been destroyed. I mean, you look at Kroger, and I'm like. Mike was a big uh, Kroger fan for uh, you know a really long time, and uh, you know was kind of to me somewhat uninteresting because of uh, you know because of the nature of those companies and the fact that they operate on razor thin um, uh, margins. Uh, and Kroger, uh, essentially, since the first of the year, has gone from 35 down to 20 bucks, and uh, had a high over 40. You know, now those companies are again talking and talking about what it is that they're going to be doing as a strategy to move these companies forward, um, and they've been so dramatically pummeled. You know. Kroger, it's a it's a huge company, uh, and really was not subject to the kind of moves that we had uh, over many many years. You know, is now down fifty percent, and you know, a lot of things look more attractive down fifty percent. Yeah, but did value basis didn't uh, Kroger um, right after the Amazon say uh, thing say that. They might not be large enough to compete. I think, wait a minute. Well, no, not what? against Amazon. I mean, look at who they're competing against. It's not like Kroger is competing against Publix anymore. 
know, Kroger is competing again against the Publix and the A&P and, you know, all of the other people in that business. But all of that, that entire, I, I don't know what the numbers look like, but I would say that that sector, including all of them, is probably smaller than Amazon. Well, and I mean, actually, when, you really, when it, you really look at it, it was interesting you say that because uh, um, what was it? Fox Business the other day, they had a rundown, or was it CNBC? It may have been CNBC that uh, they had a rundown of, of Amazon on one side, and then the the uh, web side of uh, Walmart, and and they listed like seven other companies. And and still, they were one sixth the size of Amazon. It's like, yeah. oh my God! And then when Amazon was toying with people, saying that they were going to go into clothes, well, the Nordstroms and uh, I forget what the other one, a uh, very large one, they took a dive last week. You know, it's like, yeah. man, unbelievable. Retail in general has been very, very difficult, uh, and. Team retail is a wasteland. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, it's just amazing where some of these, you know, like the uh, ANF Abercrombie and Fitch and J. Crew and oh yeah, uh, Urban Urban Outfitters and you know all of these things that are um, style related, where you have to have the right inventory of the right style because the team market is. So fickle and so changeable. When you look at those stocks, some of those stocks are down seventy-five and eighty percent. Well, and look at what happened. Say, sporting good wise. You know, you had Sports Authority that did go under. Uh, Gander Mountain, which is in the process of closing all of its stores this week. Yep. Um, so all of a sudden, you start looking. Okay, where are people getting? Obviously, Dick Sporting Goods has uh, come in to fill part of that gap. But you know it's uh, uh, it's amazing. They're getting it. Like, they're getting it the same place that it looks like you're going to be getting Whole Foods from Amazon. Yeah. Now uh, the big news last week was Nike came out. Since you're talking about that group, Nike came out and said that they were regearing themselves to sell directly to the consumer. Well. You know, uh oh, <laughs> yeah, Foot Locker collapsed, Dick's Sports, yeah, in fact, collapsed pretty, yep. bit, you know, pretty hard. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember who else is in, in that group anymore. Champs is pretty much gone. Um, so you know, where are you going to buy your Nike shoes? You know, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you know, you can buy them on Amazon. There's almost nothing you can't buy on Amazon. Well, now, I, Charles, I cannot buy shoes on the web. I mean, I have to try them on. Yeah, but that's the beauty of Amazon. They send them to you. If you don't like the fit of them or you don't like what you got, you turn around, you print out the free return um, ticket, it gets pasted on the same box that it came in with, and it goes back, and you get a credit for it. I mean, you know, it, it, that may be the case for you, but, you know, my shoe, my shoe size has not changed in probably 40 years, maybe more. You know, I'm pretty sure that by the time I was in college, you know, my feet were the same size that they are now. I mean, if you're, unless you have some unusual situation, I think shoes would be an incredibly easy thing to buy online, especially if, you know, when you got it, if you didn't like the way they feel, you sent them back. Um, you know, it's the same thing with QVC. And um, what's the other one? Home shopping. Yeah. You know, they, wow. They, it's it's really unbelievable that the number of things that you can get there. And if you can't get it on Amazon, you can get it on eBay. Yeah, that's true. That's that's 
Boy, that's amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. But, you know, you have to wonder, okay, what is going to be the future? Uh, it's uh, I know Walmart unveiled last week that they were going to have these kiosks that uh, they would have shoppers uh, available to shop for you. And then you just go right. into the kiosk and pick up your uh, your stuff. Um, and it's all... In another area, relative to the kiosks, there was a... There was an article uh, overnight and this morning, they were talking about it on CNBC, that McDonald's was talking about getting rid of cashiers for kiosks in the stores. Yes, and that's on uh, all 14,000 stores in the U.S. Yeah, you bet. Well, Well, you know, they don't do anything except maybe test market something in individuals. They roll it out across the entire franchise base. You know, I tell you, it's funny. Uh, Tom Sullivan was talking about that uh, yesterday about uh, specifically Seattle, that they have, you know, moved their minimum wage way up. And uh, and everything seems to be I, like even some of the coffee houses uh, in Seattle are going robotic. So, yeah. you know, it's OK. They made the minimum wage may be up there, but uh, they're just going to lay off a bunch of people. Um, and yeah. replace them with robots. Now, you're still going to need computer programs to program the robots, but there again, right. that's a whole different labor force uh, that you're looking for. Yeah, yeah it, it's it's going to be really uh, uh, very, very interesting to see uh, uh, what shakes out with uh, all of that, especially in the fast food industry, because I know Arby's, said that they were going all robots, all robots. Uh, um, I'm sorry, Carl's Jr. um, in uh, Southern California. So if that happens, um, boy, there's going to be massive layoffs. And, and, you know, I don't know. That's great. You know, so minimum wage moved up. It's basically, you know, 30, 40 percent higher now than before. Uh, Except like everything else, yeah, you can earn more. If you can find a job. But those are high school jobs. I mean, that's a... I know. You know, I, I worked at a Baskin Robbins ice cream Unfortunately, they're also seniors' jobs. Well, yeah, that, that too now. Yeah, that's very true. That's very true. But, you know, if you look at now, uh, Publix especially, you know, uses a lot of the uh, senior population as well. Uh, but, you know, now that they're, you know, talking about the robotic checkouts or no checkouts... You know, you just, right. you know, whatever number you've got, it just barcodes you as you walk out and, you know, and that bill comes right off your credit card. So, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, that's um, that's going to be the future of shopping. I <laughs> and, guess. Then, and then you get in line behind some 72 year old trying to use the automated checkout at the <laughs> Dawes Grocery. You know, <laughs> yeah. And it, you know, there are some people who just shouldn't be allowed to use it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know, it's a, we've got the new things at Publix with the, you know, the, the chips, you know, in your credit card. Um, and so right. it took me so long to figure that out. It's like, oh wait a minute. God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, it's amazing how all that's uh, You know, and changing. by that time. By that time in the process, um, it's not like, you know, they can stand off to the side and get it taken care of. You've got a line of people waiting to do the automated checkout with a guy who can't figure out how to pay. Uh, (laughs) And it could take you all of the time that you saved from standing in line with all of the people who are going to a spot where there's a cashier. (laughs) Yeah, sure. Now, when you were when you were a kid, did you uh, start in the fast food industry? I did not. Okay. I did not, but that was because I, you know, I mean, I had a paper route, and I, you know, and fortunately, I, did too. I didn't have to do that. And you know, I'm going back as far as I can really think about. But um, no, I did not do it. But my kids all did. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, or, you know, bus boy at, uh, you know, some local restaurant, uh, you know. Uh, I mean, 
you know, I knew what I wanted to do, so it, it, I was kind of exempt from that. Um, well, it, because I always knew that I wanted to be involved the way that I did. Yeah. So, you know, that was just fortunate. But, you know, today, like I said, you know, it's teenagers and seniors. Sure. When I was uh, uh, thir- 13, I guess, I was delivering uh, the L.A. Times. <laughs> <laughs> on my uh, bicycle. Oh, yeah. On my bicycle, exactly. Sure, Hi. Of course. Yeah. Dr. King. Yeah, this is Robert. Well, fantastic. Calling from Korea. It's midnight in Korea. Holy smokes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it is 11.32. Uh, wow. Uh, so let's talk about <laughs> Leo Motors. What's new at Leo Motors? Oh, my goodness. How are you? It's been years. Hi. Very good. Very good. Thank you. How are you? Uh, we are doing great. Uh, boy, uh, give us a, give us an up uh, update from uh, South Korea. Well, we are, we are, we are okay. <laughs> we are doing very good. Well, I, my what, recollection was that you guys had some pretty interesting storage units for power. It's been oh such yeah. A long time. Well, uh, yeah. The nowadays we are concentrate open uh, the electric propulsion system for electric boats, like like uh, the yachts and the fishing boats. Hmm. Wow. Now, yeah. how uh, how large are you? What you're saying yachts? So I mean, I would imagine those are. Uh, Pretty good sized boats. Oh, uh, yeah. The, we are, uh, we have developed an, uh, the proportion system from 40 to 700 horsepower. Wow. Recently, we uh, finished on the, the test of a uh, 700 uh, horsepower system. We, uh, we main in the our main business is in converting the, the all the yachts and bus. Of course, in the the, uh, the, uh, the bus which has an in, uh, internal combustion engine, boats and yachts into electric boat. Like in the, the uh, uh, in our research in the United States, there are almost in the more than 1.6 million uh, yachts and boats. In the United States, which uh, uh, ages more than uh, 20 years, those boats need to uh, exchange the engine with a, into a new one. But if you change them into electric propulsion system, amazing thing is happening. Usually, when you uh, turn on the engine in the boats and yachts, you can uh, hear uh, the you know breed noisy sound. In the electric system, there is no such sound, so you can enjoy very very calm, very very comfortable yachting and boating. Right? Also, electric propulsion system uh, does not make any smells. In the boats, you can uh, you must uh, smell the the uh, you know some uh, very uncomfortable, unpleasant smell from the the gas or engine oils. Try right? diesel, <laughs> diesel fumes. Yeah, <laughs> you got that right. right. Well, yeah, that- in the elec- ele- in the electric propellant system, uh, there is no such smell, right? So you know, the, our major, you know, the, uh, well, actually, the, we are uh, preparing uh, all the, you know, the things you know, to go to the United States market. Our goal of this year is in, uh, uh, to start the you know, business in the United States. Uh, well, probably you know, we are going to start you know, the business in Los Angeles area first, then maybe Miami next. Sure. So yeah. you know, the, our goal, yeah. Our, our goal is that you know, uh, we want to convert all 
selling yachts, right? In the selling yachts, you need the uh, you know, uh, power when you leave the Nadi port, right? Because of the, uh, the flow is in the uh, opposite. You need to uh, you know, go away from the Nadi uh, port, right? So uh, in the case, you need to turn the engine, but, you know, we want you know, those engines into electric propellant system. And also, you need the uh, power when you just stand still uh, on the sea, right? Not your boat, uh, not your sailing yacht you know, the, to floor somewhere else. So, you, know, the, uh, you need the uh, power to, you know, uh, to be uh, stand still in the sea, on the sea. So, you know, for that, you need the uh, power, and also you need the power to use the electricity in the boat, right? Like the uh, kitchen, air conditioner, or heater, right? Sure. But if you use electric power for them, you don't need to hear noise, or you don't need to you know, the smell nasty, you know, the, uh, you know so, but you know, the, our you know, the, uh, electric propellant system is also very unique. As long as you sail with the wind, you don't need to charge the battery. We, well, because you know, the, uh, the battery, uh, we have another invention, which is vessel generator. When you sail, right? You have a power from the wind, and then the underneath of your boat, you have a generator. Well, the you know, screw is in the uh, you know, uh, you know, we call that reverse screw, it generates electricity, right? As long as you sail with the uh, wind, you can get electricity underneath of your you know, the boat. So, there is a very unique system. And uh, in the world, there are few companies have a, uh, you know, the electric power more than 40 horsepower because you know, the more than uh, 40 horsepower, you need to use more than 100 volt system. And in that case, there is always a danger of, you know, the electric shock when uh, the, the, the water, especially seawater, come into the uh, port in the accident or, you know, uh, storm or whatever. So if you use uh, the, uh, more than 100 voltage system, you need a electric shock prevention circuit in your power system. And uh, we patent, uh, patented it, you know, uh, internationally. And uh, as, as far as, uh, as we know, we are the only one company in the world which has a uh, electric shock prevention system, uh, electric shock prevention circuit, you know, in the uh, propellant system. Wow. wow. So in the, uh, our system is very unique, very unique. Now, how... Um... Okay, I've got to ask you. I mean, we had a, a Grand Banks, and you know, and obviously the engine room was at the, at, you know, the uh, the base of the. the oh, <laughs> what do you what do you call the the well, the engine room was at the bottom of the boat. So uh, anyway, um, how would you, you um, how large are these electrical motors compared to like the standard uh, John Deere diesels or whatever that folks have in their uh, yachts right now uh -huh. yeah uh you know the we we have developed uh, the up to 700 horsepowers right that is almost uh, the uh, 700 uh, the horsepower says uh, the almost uh, one uh, ten thousand uh, the uh, cc engine right so any uh, the selling use 
within the uh, up to 10,000 know, the CC engine must be uh, a sh- very huge yachts, sailing yachts, right? Okay, not uh, and then the, uh, not, now sailing yeah. by sailing. You mean sailboats versus power boats? Is that oh, right? Well, we we are not interested in the power boats. Okay, we well, are okay. interested in the, the sailboats first. Okay, I was because gonna, okay. we can give them more advantage to the sailboats. Gotcha. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, now, if you could just figure out a way to harness the wind and, and you know, recharge everything that way, that that would be the ultimate. Right. That, yeah, but you right. are right. I mean, if you if you had that uh, um, electrical motor that could handle uh-huh. the, the air conditioning and uh, if you have a washer and dryer on board and stuff like that, Definitely. that would be great. Right. Yeah. Right, right. Wow. So you don't need to know the turn on the engine. Uh, you know, when, when you, you know, as long as you sail, right? You you can use you know, the uh, electricity, you know, the free electricity. What we call you know, the you know uh, that is you know, the uh, reusable energy. Sure. In the ocean. Mm. So, what kind of a distance would you be talking about? Uh, in, in the way of being well, able to power. as long as you sell the uh, well, we we can say distance is not on the uh, not on uh, the matter. Uh, you can get any distance because in the uh, you generate electricity like in the uh, uh, one hour you can get in the uh, more than three kilowatts of electricity. Okay. So. You know, as you know, uh, well, you can uh, the, uh, you know, the sail uh, the without any uh, the char- without charging the battery. You can sail uh, the months, two months, even a year. Wow, that's amazing. That... You know, as uh, you have something to eat. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's that is mind-boggling. Uh, um, yeah. So now, yeah, you... and uh, the. A conversion is also very simple. Uh, it takes about you know, it's just a day, you know. You can uh, take the engine and the, the gas tank out and just you know, simply put you know, the electric, our, our electric propellant system on it and battery. That's it. Now, how heavy are the batteries? I mean, I remember those old boat batteries, and we had uh, 12 of them. It depends on the, uh, you know, uh, uh, what well, the initial you know, the distance you need, but you know, the uh, well, I can say the motor and battery together it cannot ex- exceed you know, the uh, the weight of engine and the gas tank. So it is almost you know, the same with the engine and gas tank weight. Wow! And you're planning what unveiling this uh, in Los Angeles? Yeah, the, we we already contacted you know, the uh, several uh, potential partners in the Marina del Rey, you know, the uh, in the Los Angeles area, and uh, we uh, are looking for uh, any capable you know, distributors and uh, workshops and uh, yacht repair shops. Yeah, so you know, the, we we are looking for you know, the uh, many potentials. Uh, to uh, the uh, you know co- cooperate uh, the our uh, business there. Wow, that it's this sounds <laughs> this sounds really amazing. <laughs> so uh, yeah, well nobody has done yet uh, yet. So uh, the, uh, we are pioneering uh, a certain uh, the you know the we call it, uh, call it uh, the Green Harbor Project. We want you know, the, uh, the many harbors with you know, the green system, no engine, and so you know, there is no spills in the, you know, the uh, in the water. So you can get you know, the very clean water, uh, very you know, the calm and uh, sound release in you know, the system. Only you can hear the only you know, the sound from the wind. Yeah, this this is amazing. Wow. So. Um, what kind of reaction? I know that uh, you know a lot of the boat builders are in Taiwan. Have any of them tested this for you? Oh yeah, the what well, 
anybody who, you know, the experience in the, our system, they just amazed, you know. They, for, for, uh, the, the, first of all, people are amazed they can talk while the, the, uh, they sail. You know, normally when you use in the, in the small boat, when you use in the, the internal combustion engine, you cannot talk. You cannot hear, right, because of the, the noise. That's true. And you can't yep. talk, right? And uh, the, another the, the thing that the people are amazed with is, you know, the, 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 the air is pretty fresh because there is no, you know, the nasty smell on the boat. Well, and I, I just think, too, uh, you know, thinking about this uh, and thinking about, you know, the whole pollution aspect, as you mentioned before, I mean, this this is a totally green solution um, to, right. uh, yeah, to... It's yeah, a, and then, the, you know what, the, why people use the, the selling yachts? For pleasure, right? And then the, uh, when they change their old system into our electric propellant system, just a pleasure will be added, right? And the, the, their yes becomes premium yes, right? Compared with the, the existing conventional internal combustion engine yes. Sure. Become, just to become a premium. Doctor, what are we looking at uh, price-wise, the uh, price point on this? Uh, the, the price of our system is almost you know, the, uh, the similar to you know, the, uh, their existing you know, the internal combustion engine system. So price-wise, we are also very competitive. Okay, so if you are comparing this to a, a gas, uh, gas motor and or uh, diesel, um, it would be about, mm-hmm. the, about the same if you were to pull that about out. About the same. Okay. And another you know, the huge advantage is you know, the fuel cost. You don't need to pay expensive fuel cost, right? Yes. Oh, just, yeah. You, know, you charge the battery. Been there. <laughs> just in the same way. Right? So how... So, you know, the hour system... Mm. How often do your batteries need to be recharged then on on the sailboats? Yeah, I I told you, as long as you, know, the, you sail away, right in uh, on on the sea, you don't need to recharge because you know, the it is automatically recharged on the list of your vessel. We call that you know, the reverse screw, right? Reverse screw you know, the uh. You know, it you know, the devolve uh, reversely, and the, 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 we have a uh, dynamo underneath, right? So the dynamo makes the electricity uh, almost in the three kilowatts per hour, right? Uh, the three kilowatts is uh, is the uh, you know electricity you can use all day at home in the normal house. So as long as you send away, you don't need to charge. That is another great advantage of our system. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, patent it, test it, almost another four years. So you know, the, our system is you know, the, uh, very uh, you know, the robust in terms of our system. Uh, Charles, Mike, uh, any questions? That's a huge savings. It's a huge fuel savings. What, oh, yeah, you, definitely. So um, we just wonder what that is. It's just a very big savings to convert to. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, well, you, maybe not, you cannot imagine very easily because you know, nobody has a time to do it. And nobody has developed such a product in the world. But we are going to pioneer the green boats, green harbor, no spills on the Navy Sea. So we make the Navy harbor green and all the Navy, uh, you know, ocean environment green. That is 
our goal. Well, that's amazing. Are you ever uh, going to venture into the area of power boats at all? Oh, uh, we we uh, they going to be power boats. We purchased uh, the old Ferrari power boat. The boat that uh, they made by Ferrari, uh, like uh, the 12, uh, 12 years ago. And its engine is almost gone. So we take out the engine. Uh, the engine is almost uh, the 700 horsepower. And uh, we convert it into uh, the electric power boats. Mike has in the picture of it. We have already, we have already uh, been uh, successful in the test and uh, we publicized it. And uh, we are uh, that power boats and the, you know, uh, uh, runs on the sea more than uh, the 50 knots, right? So you know, the, uh, it was, has been very successful. And uh, whenever you, know, the, you uh, have a chance to visit you know, the our place, you, know, the, you can, uh, you know, test you know, the our power bus. Wow. Anytime who are interested in it, we are welcome to have you know, the, you know, the uh, experience our power, electric power bus. Amazing. So well, you know, they run like a, one or two hours. Well, electric system is okay, but you know, the, if you go out like you know, the uh, whole day, hey, you need a, a you know a huge battery. So we do not recommend you know, the uh, for the long time you know, the uh, sailing. But if you use you know, the only uh, one or two hours, you know, the our electric power boat system is uh, still you know, the uh, huge advantage. Yeah, well, you know, just I, I was just thinking, um, you know, uh, the vibration from our diesel engines uh, was, you know, could get mm -hmm. pretty severe uh, on on our power boat. But just thinking of the whole uh, electrical, I mean, having driven electrical cars, which make no noise, and you don't even know that they're going <laughs> sixty miles an hour, um, it's it mm -hmm. is truly amazing. I think you're you're really onto something. So, uh, what is your website? How can people uh, find out about this? This is amazing. Yeah, uh, well, the you can uh, visit you know, the, our website, you know, the, uh, the leomotors.com, at your dot com. All right. So or lgmarines.com. That is, well, LG Marines is in the our or our subsidiary, LG. Uh, M A R I N E S dot com. Perfect. Wow. You can get uh, the full information of our products. Wow. This is, this is something. Uh, Charles, any questions? Nope. Uh, not really. I, boy, this okay. is <laughs> an amazing story. Okay. Yes, it is. It's an amazing yeah. story. Well, you know, uh, obviously, uh, we uh, all of us are concerned about you folks down in uh, South Korea. With with a crazy man up in the north, and uh, be safe over there, okay? <laughs> well, we had them. We had them. Uh, the, you know, for you know, the almost uh, seventy years. Or so yeah. they are always the same, you know. Yeah, yes. seventy years. Yeah, yeah. so you, right. you you've had you've had crazy people up in north uh, North Korea for all those yeah, years. Yeah. So you know, the, when you have uh, the, uh, such a uh, such kind of person for a long time. We don't need to worry about it. Okay. <laughs> it's amazing what you can get. <laughs> What's that, Charles? I said it's amazing what you can get used to. <laughs> yeah, that, that's really yeah. sick that, you know, the folks in South Korea yeah. have to worry about this every day. I mean, I just, I, I'm just absolutely amazed, but... Hey, I uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, still you know, the uh, uh, you know people around the world do use our you know, the Sarah from from Samsung and they use our air conditioner, TV, you know, our you know, the uh, washer. Well, a lot of people use you know, the uh, the the product from the South Korea, even though we have a uh, crazy people there, right? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, sometimes you know, the crazy people you know, the uh, spur you know, the our workmanship and uh, you know, the our intelligence so it's not not so bad maybe actually well uh just uh be safe and keep going and uh, when do you plan okay. on uh, uh, unveiling this in los angeles uh, when do you plan it uh uh well 
the hopefully in the V1 from there, you know, the our uh, test products on uh, on this September this year. Very good. Wow. This is uh, absolutely amazing. Well, thank you so much, and thanks for the call from South Korea. And Leo Motors, thank boy. Thank you so much. Guy, we Leo have Motors, L-E-O-M-O-T-C-Q-B. Okay, they, right. are, they are on the QB. Okay, O-T-C-Q-B. Right. All right. Yeah. Well, nice thank hearing you. from you again. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, you bet. Well, be safe over okay. there. Okay. Bye bye. Okay. Take care. Bye bye. Michael, uh, how's the stock uh, performing for Leo? It's been very steady. A lot of people don't know about it. It's really the Tesla of South Korea, um, and it's just around a, a ten to eleven cents day after day with very light volume because it's not that well known. Well, I'll tell you one thing. If uh, they uh, uh, start uh, announcing this electric boat uh, for sailboats, my God, I mean, the the prospects of that worldwide are off the charts. Yeah. Yeah, that would be great if they had a a strong U.S. partner. Yes. Oh, you bet. Well, hey, I'll bet somebody will uh, uh, jump up and and join them here because – you talk about just environmentally speaking, um, it's it's all a difference in the world. But uh, uh, Charles and Mike, uh, uh, I presume we'll have the uh, Fourth of July off. Is that uh, is that uh, the looks plans? Like it. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, I, I think that's yeah. a, that's a real good idea. So we will be talking yeah. with you in a couple weeks. Okay, on the fourteenth. Uh, yep, sounds good. Zoom on July fourteenth. Oh, fourteenth. Okay. Oh, okay. We're really pushing it. Well, back. that's the following Tuesday, right? Uh, July 7th is next like- Tuesday. Uh, uh, I think it's... July 14th is the following Tuesday. I thought it was the 11th, but anyway, we'll figure it's it out. And we'll talk to you soon. <laughs> Mike King in Las Vegas. Charles Moskowitz in Boston. Boy, nice hearing from the good doctor from Leo Motors in South Korea phased in the least that he's got a bunch of nutcases up in North Korea. <laughs> he said, oh, we've had him for 70 years. I love it. This is WPSL 14. Lucy, WPSL.com, webcast of the world.